Let me just hit record so I don't forget. Right, so Hi YouTube. <laughs> right, so the 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 thing with this kind of game, it becomes very, very easy to play. Because even though, you know, they do have a Kate Lulu, your brand is just gonna beat them both up early. Um that's kinda what happened. Obviously there were a lot of mistakes that we still made, but we'll go yep. We shall go over. So even though it was a win, you know, like we'll still take one. So just no, there's so many mistakes you can. There's so many yeah. mistakes you can get e even in wins. Hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Agreed. Yeah, exactly. See, funny enough, at one point in my coaching career, I believed that it was always better to look at a loss, but mm, sometimes it's actually mm. better to look at a win. Like uh, my opinion changed over time. Um, mm. But yeah, so the reason why you don't want Cole in this lane is because even though it's a Caitlyn who is oppressive, you're going to outscale her anyway, so you don't have to force anything. Like, say, for example, you're playing into maybe like a Cogmo, maybe you're a little bit more forced to do things, or maybe like a Jin. Uh, but overall, um, you're not here. Now, on top of that as well, you have a Brand, who Brand has kill pressure on both of them on his own. So you don't mm -hmm. really want to be going kind of too defensive into a cull because then you're not really going to be able to um, capitalize on the advantage the brand gives you inside the lane. So okay, so like go cull into if, stuff if, like Cog Lulu, and I have a uh, yeah. let's say like well even a Lux doesn't count but like a Nami or a or like a <laughs> some like a Leona or something you know like stuff that's just gonna get kited Leona I mean yeah because if Leona goes to jump on the ADC she on the Cogmo then she gets polymorphed and dies oh I thought for sure I'd go Doran's Blade into if I had like a Leona because we're trying well, to kill it, it depends it depends because like if say for example uh, at like 6 for example then uh -huh. the Lulu's just gonna ult the Cogmor and Leona's never gonna actually do damage to him now obviously if you had win the lane then sure but uh, I mean I think yeah I think so anyway I think overall uh, it's, it's hmm. only if you don't really have much kill pressure if you have any kill pressure, then you wouldn't um, go for it. Or okay. I'll say, for example, you're against uh, something like a maybe like a Draven Pike, where you can't even walk up to the lane. Then mm -hmm. you could go something like Cole Lane just so that you can farm it out. Really? Okay. Yeah. Just because you're never winning that lane, right? Like not in a million years. Well, I know what I. But so my opinion on that is like you or how I understood it was you go. Doran's played in that matchup because you need the extra HP to survive it all in. I mean, yeah, but you. I mean, well, I mean, the thing is, even with the HP from that, you won't survive it all in. Not against like Draven yeah. Pike, you know. Like you'll, yeah. you'll you will a hundred percent die unless you back away from the wave. So you just farm under your tower for the entire game and just play safe, pretty much. Hmm. Okay. Um, but so yeah, it's the so opposite of way I was told. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's also a lot of, like, niche situations as well, right? Like, say, for example, if you're playing into a Draven Pike, but you've got, say, uh, a Lee Sin Jungle, um, who's started blue buff, then, you know, it might be different. Um, so, say, for example, you had, this is the thing, it's very hard with Lee because there's so many variables, but say, for example, uh, always, if you had, yeah. say if you had, like, an Orn or a Scion top lane, and uh, you were playing, say, Jinx and whatever, anything really, into um, a Draven Pike, then that Lee Sin will end up pathing towards you, so you can still go, say, the Doran's Blade, because you're still going to need that power to fight when the Lee Sin gets into bot lane, right? But say if we're going to swap that for, say, like a Diana, who just wants to farm her jungle and not really gank early, then it's kind yeah. of a little bit different, you know? So there's a lot of different variables, obviously. It's, huh. it's different on a game-to-game -game basis, but... yeah. Yeah, overall. Huh. Okay. Um, Cull, Cull is basically... Cull is when you accept that you're not going to be able to win fights whatsoever. Um, and then you at least get an extra 200 or whatever gold out of it for free, you know? I think hmm. it's something like okay. 182 gold you get in total from Cull, something like that. Um, so, uh, one of the first things is that we are playing a little bit too far back. Now, we have an extra... Um, uh, well, we will have an extra minion in a second. And Brand is already zoning them out, right? So they do get two, but we were a little bit slow. Now there, for example, you could have just thrown your W. Now what do you notice about your mana? It's full. Yeah, it's full. So even throwing like one W there, if that lands on the cake, great. And then your mana's regening anyway, so... 
Because now you're at full mana again, which, you know, isn't the worst, but... Also, one of the big things as well, you want to more so prioritize throwing your W onto the Caitlyn than the Lulu. Why do you think that is? It's the one farming. And okay, so that's one our thing. Fo our, fo our focus for the... It's just the focus for the lane, because it's like... Yeah. Um, like, it's... it's he, She's the one taking the CS, so the more... The more she gets poked, the easier it is to contest mm -hmm. her for CS. And have then the more you can bully her, bully her out. Have I gone on about faces with you before? About Sagan? Face, faces. The faces of the mm -hmm. champ. So Don't think so. Always, always, always when you're in the lane, focus on the faces of the champ. So the face is basically... it's like Oh, like the not the feet? Wall. No, no, not no. Not the, the feet? No, no, no. Focus oh. on the face. Because okay, the face okay. is where they've clicked, right? So see Jinx's face here? Uh -huh. You know that you've clicked there, right? It's it's going to be in a direct line. Mm -hmm. Same with Kate. Kate right now has just clicked down here. Lulu has just clicked here. Brand has just clicked here. You can draw these kind of lines and you can see where they've clicked based on that, right? This is why mm -hmm. things like wiggling is so important. Now watch the Caitlyn's face in just a second. So if we click play. Okay, so did you see her face there? Mm -hmm. Her face was at this minion because she's mm -hmm. walking to farm it. Now she's walked back now. Now it, it's kind of the same as well. Like, so if you want to throw skill shots, wait until you see their face, look at something of importance. So next time the Kate say looks at this minion with her face, that's when you go to throw a W at where her max range is. Now, because of this, you know that she's going to be clicking this minion, right? And you know when mm -hmm. she clicked this minion because she'll turn around and she'll face it. So at that point then, then you throw your W and there's a very high chance it'll hit because she'll auto and she'll stand there and auto. Now what will also happen as well if you do this enough is that sometimes what they'll do is they'll go throw an auto out, you'll throw your W, they'll go to the side and then all of a sudden this minion will die. Mm -hmm. So you can basically get farm leads through that as well. This is a very, very handy tip for um, playing in late. So like see here, like... Obviously, you can get it because this minion's blocking it, but the Lulu, mm -hmm. she's she's allowed to do what she wants. She can do whatever she wants, whenever she wants. She's not um, required to farm, whereas Kate, she doesn't get that luxury. So this is a, uh -huh. an easy way that you can, you know, get a lot of pressure um, on people inside your laning phase um, purely through, again, just abusing faces, like, really, really hard. Um, so this was... Fine now, uh, and then t -t 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 -t. so again, the brand uh, went WE, which means he's gonna keep pushing the wave, but you know, he does guarantee to get his E off on them, which is passive, does do quite a lot. Um, but even here, right, like just walk up a little bit further, just be ready to do damage. And um, as long as you're still in range to actually get the cannon, that's fine. So here, you wait like really far back, just walk up. She's focusing the brand right there, and we didn't even get a W. Now, the thing is that you have to realize about your W is your W is independent, so. You can throw an auto out and then W, and you know your W is not really going to get restricted by. Um, Thank you. Your your W is actually a soft auto attack reset, and um, uh -huh. so if you auto W auto, your auto will come out a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then this is fine. We have no kind of vision, so this is fine that we just step back. Uh, again, nice W on Lulu. Again, this kind of kind of flip, throwing kind of that W there because she can dodge it super super easily. Uh, but overall, this was good that we're positioned here, just because we don't know where that jungler is, and I used topside. So this is one of the things that makes Jinx very, very good into things like Caitlyn. She outscales, and also you can still farm with your W, which is very, very good. I mean, you can farm with your Q as well at a really long range too, but overall... So here we did, mm, so this, we, we should have just trusted what we said, because here we, oh, okay, Brand kind of messed this up, actually, didn't we? Because this is... Well, we know, we know Udyr's near yeah. Scuttle here. Yeah. Like, we called that he was there, but the Brand doesn't really watch it. You, what you could do, you could use your pings a little bit more. Uh, I think here as well, what you probably should have done is just instantly flashed instead of using your heal. Because obviously heal is going to give you movement speed, great, but like you want to just get as much difference distance from the Caitlyn Lulu as possible, and you're going to end up using your flash anyway, you know. Like you're not going to okay. escape using it, so just use it early. Okay, I was thinking, I was you know, 
heal for Mo- heal for Moose Bee to get Brand out of there. And yeah, if, so U- if Udyr burn if Udyr burn stun on Brand, which I thought he was going to, like I thought he was going to be, he's going to waste it. Then it's like, oh, okay, now I get to walk so out of here. He, he doesn't really. So Udyr doesn't really waste his stun. So Udyr stun. Uh, yeah, works, never mind. So cool down. Yep, yep. on yeah. each target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he can use it on both of you, and it, it's fine. It's just an enhanced auto attack, which is one of the reasons he's obviously so strong. Now, this this is... I know I shouted you, uh, you a little bit here, so... Uh, well, I mean, not really, but you know what I mean. Like, here, you cannot leave an entire wave this big for a mistake that your jungler is about to make, because you wanted to move up to this. It's just too bad. You've got so much gold here in this wave, and this is, like, uh, around 100 and... 10 or so gold. It's over 100 gold. So you can't just yeah. leave that, you know? Okay. But you could have also used pings as well to back out. Here, you have a brand support. Like, you don't want to leave the wave in this kind of position, especially against a Caitlyn Lulu, because they've already got the first back, right? So they're already going to come yep. back to the wave. This is just going to result in them freezing the wave. So you have to just get it pushed out, uh, which, you know, brand does help. The brand did somewhat understand some things, but... And they were still here, but it's whatever. Like, they were just trying to bait you. That was a terrible bait. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they expected. But now we get um, back prior, right? Like, we ended up backing before mm-hmm. them, so now we get pressure in the lane. Now, so to think of the reasoning. So, right here, see, Caitlyn and Lulu are still in the lane. So, yep. right here, your your mind needs to instantly go, well, what do I want to do when I get there? Now, you've already spent and you're also leaving. So, they're going to have to recall already. So, the time that they're recalling alone is going to allow you to get pressure or, or prio instantly, which can lead you into the dragon. So, at mm-hmm. this point, even though, okay, if there was nothing to do, a slow push would be more powerful. And you're just going to slow push a really big wave into them. And you don't want to do that in this moment because their recall timer is really, really bad. Like, they've really griefed it, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So here, you just quickly push. It's a cannon as well, so you want that into the tower as soon as possible. Now, why do you also want that cannon into the tower? Um, well, if you can deny it, but it's a yeah, lot of turret so shots. If it's a lot of turret shots. Okay, so how many tower shots is it? Seven and an auto to CS it. So it's so eight. So eight turret yeah. shots. Exactly. So those eight turret shots are going to do what with the lane? Oh, bounce it. Uh, yeah, I mean, to some degree, but it means that the cannon being under the tower, since the tower has spent eight tower shots to kill it, it means that um, it will 100% come back into you. The wave is not going to reset, you know? Mm-hmm. So it means that you get that slow push coming into you, which as long as you respect it and you respect it pulling in, then you're... Really, really good. Now here, you want to make sure that you 100% get something on this because of your legend stack. Mm-hmm. Um, question. What? Yeah. So if we were to take this exact same situation but use farming topside, what mm-hmm. would I... You'd probably still look so, crash it, to be honest, because it'll so still you, bounce you, back. You would, you'd crash it, maybe Ward River slash Jungle and try and take a plate yeah. or two? Yeah, well, you wouldn't even put, like need to take a player or two in this matchup because you're going to outscale Caitlyn no matter what, right? So mm-hmm. <clears throat> you don't really need that extra plate gold in this matchup specifically. You just want to play safe, let the wave come back into you, and then just farm it by your tower. Because that also means if the Yi is farming top, that means then when the wave bounces back to your tower, he's going to have a gank opportunity on bot lane, right? So, okay. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, you might not use that window, and that's completely on him, like, but... The, the opportunity is there, you know? Like, mm-hmm. one thing you have to do in these elos, especially this is, like, what, pretty much diamond now? You have to just yeah. kind of expect... D4 gatekeeping. Yeah, so you... Sorry. You, it's fine, it's fine. You have to basically um, just set your jungler up to come and gank you as best you possibly can, as many times as you possibly can. And then it's like, if you say set it up ten times and they're just completely out of it with their monitor off, you know? Um, mm-hmm. then they might not come nine times and on the tenth time they'll come and you'll get loads of kills and then you'll snowball, you know? So it's kind okay. of a case of your you're basically like you're basically like holding holding like a dog treat and but like a little like a little bone and in and you're mm-hmm. like, come on, come on, come on, come come get these kills, come on and then eventually uh-huh. eventually they'll come and get them. But uh, so here moving a little bit earlier because the wave is a reset, right? 
So mm-hmm. as soon as you see that Uda, uh, you just instantly go now. You just leave. Because, like, this wave will come back anyway. So, see, we just wasted, say, two, three seconds. That could have been a W onto Uda that would have got the kill. It would have been a W on Uda. So, you could have got a kill there, see? But you just okay. weren't maybe looking at the map. And it's like, in this situation, it's like, what were you looking at, you know? Because mm. there's nothing to farm right now. So, if there's nothing to farm, you want to be looking elsewhere. Especially the minimap. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's why you should be looking, you know, keep looking down, keep, oh, look, a new deer. And then you go earlier, you get that W off, you get a reset, you run the Lulu down, you kill her, and then you kill the Caitlyn as well in this scenario, to be honest. So this is a potential okay. triple kill for you early into the game, which, you know, triple kill at seven minutes on Jinx, that game is won. So yeah, even, like, true. these little things are, are really big. Now, next up with this, your E here, like, she is not going to walk around here, right? Like, yeah. I don't know if this was just you misclicking with your mouse, but she's not going to walk here. What you should look to do is use it like this. So then, not only can she not walk through here, she also has to go up and around, which you can just go through here, right? You can close mm-hmm. the gap, and then she's here, and you're here. Mm-hmm. She's then going to run through you, and then you kill her, and then kill Kate, you know? Mm-hmm. So just being careful with your trap placements is really, really big because now she gets out. Also, you W as well. Like in terms of the W, again, this comes down to the faces. And her face did not move whatsoever there, right? Mm-hmm. So her face is down here and she's never going to walk up there. So what you do is you zoning W, you throw it like this. She's either going to walk into it and take it or she's going to have to stop allowing you to do more damage. She might even make a mistake and try and walk up. And then your traps would actually work there. <laughs> so yeah, trap placement is really, really important. And just how you kind of determine where you're going to throw your skill shots. Um, also may not. And see, this wave has only just got here now. It's good that you pulled this out of the tower range though. Otherwise tower would have got that. And then it's good how you actually held these minions here. Pike uh, on a bit of an adventure. You clicked the wrong one there, though. This was ye, uh, ye doing ye things. Caitlyn did get red buff off that. But, so this is a um, another really important concept right here, right? Because, so, maybe not directly here because... Uh, so, this recall, you never want to go for this recall. Like, it's really, really bad. So, right here, you have more than enough HP and you have more than enough mana. And they're being massively greedy still. So, uh, they're staying in the lane. So... They're going to use all of their mana now. And now, at this point, this is the one of the best case scenarios for Jinx, right? So, so why do you think this is a really, really good situation for you? They're both low mana, half health. Okay. And so, I'm yeah. full, so just free farming. I can yeah, yeah. show wave. I can, like, assuming I don't get ganked, so I don't have flash, but if I just play lane properly... Yeah, then, then, then you just get, get to just keep farming gold. And now, this is one of the mistakes that sometimes will be made. If, say, for example, you were playing into a matchup that you could potentially influence by spending this gold, then maybe you'd be inclined to actually get reset off. But in this matchup, even if you spend this 1,100 gold that you've got on you right now, it's not going to change anything with how the lane is going to be played out, right? Like, mm-hmm. the Caitlyn is still going to have more damage than you at this point, and she's still going to do more. So instead, you know, even though you can get boots, which can help you a little bit against a Lulu, Lulu's range is huge because she can pick some minion, and then she can cue you from yep. that, and then get in range to polymorph. So in these kind of situations, you're very, very happy here. You're, you're you know, just chilling. So the brand, you know, he does have mana. He can potentially do something. But so the W, um, see how it was a little bit late again? So it's just really, really late with the throw. And this is, again, because of the faces. Because you weren't really paying note to them. So there, the auto came off. So as soon as you see her go to, like, go around... Uh, I guess it, she did get W'd as well, I think, by Lulu there. So mm-hmm. she did have a massive map movement speed. So it was hard to land anyway, to be honest. Would that be in a different situation? Like, she's just CS, like, that would be a decent W? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. It'd also be quicker to. It'd probably be a quicker W two if I had boots, but that's. Uh, I mean. That's that's not. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. <clears throat> so unfortunately, you didn't either wave. Otherwise, that would have actually been a pretty clean brand combo. But. And yeah, so like I said, we're just looking to, play it out slow. 
and you know she's just gonna keep forcing this wave in which is good for you so this is this is one thing that you're doing quite a lot though you're using mana on things that you don't need to so like for example um this minion it was always mm -hmm. gonna walk forward you could have done it in minigun right minigun is free to use you don't have to pay anything oh okay yeah because it got attacked by a caster yeah so knowing how the minions are going to... So this is one of the big things with farming. It's not just knowing how to farm. It's knowing how the minions will interact with not just you, but each other. And that's a really, really important thing when it comes to minion wave management. Like, they will always, you know, change their target and focus whoever is hitting them um, when it comes to the minions. So here again, this is what I was saying. Like, you need to just use your W more. Like, way, way more. Because, you know, it's 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 not a massive amount of mana. Like, not for the amount of damage it does, you know. Like, mm -hmm. obviously you can't just randomly throw your traps out over and over because, you know, you're going to lose all of your mana. But W's, mm -hmm. you can use quite frequently um, to just chunk them down. Uh, like, it, in some matchups, you can also use rockets to just, just chunk them down, you know. So here Okay, well. so, so you're, t you're talking about W's. Yeah. When they're, you know, there was kind of no wave there. They're and they're kind of posturing. What's the difference between that and when you were saying like my W is kind of flip? Uh, because, for example, you were throwing that W at the Lulu, who doesn't need to be anywhere specific. So if that okay. initial W that you made was on a Caitlyn who was just about to auto attack a creep, it would have been fine. But it, it's very much a case of your W, especially. When you're firing it at long range, it's not a very wide ability. It's quite thin, um, and it's very telegraphed because of the wind-up it has. So because yep. of that, it means it's very easy to sidestep at long range unless they're CC'd already. So mm -hmm. they need to either be CC'd or they need to animation lock themselves. If they animation lock themselves, then you can throw it out and get it. But mm -hmm. it's just going to give them way less time or you know if you throw it towards a location where they need to be rather than where they are then that can also be a time where you can get a very easy w off and um, so here like even there like there's there's no real reason to use a q there but this is what i was kind of saying throughout as well it doesn't matter that the brand is this low on hp because the amount of burst you could it's like when you play um it's like when you play the Fizz matchup. So when you're playing against a Fizz in mid lane, for example, let's say you're playing, say, Orianna. Like, Orianna is a very slow champion to get kills. She slowly mm -hmm. has to whittle somebody down until she gets them low enough that she can say use her ultimate. Fizz mm -hmm. is the opposite of that. Fizz is a high damage burster. So say, for example, if we're playing Orianna versus Fizz and we both have um, 100 HP. So we both have 100 HP. Orianna mm -hmm. does one combo, and um, Fizz is now, let, let's say, one or two or three combos. Fizz is now, say, 30% HP. Now, if Fizz does, say, one combo to Orianna um, without using ultimate and gets her to, say, 60 to sometimes even 70% HP, um, then it doesn't matter that he only has 30 because he's going to do 60-70% of her HP with one combo. Yeah. Whereas she's maybe not gonna maybe she does twenty percent and then he lives, or she does nothing because he's got E. So it's it's mm -hmm. kind of like a, a similar situation. The amount of bursts a brand can do means that the HP he has doesn't matter. The only risk to him right now is the Caitlyn ultimate. But you've got more than enough HP to just tank that Caitlyn ultimate and still have a HP and mana advantage over them because this Caitlyn isn't gonna be able to kill you at all because she's got no mana. So you're just waiting it out and just biding your time. The Q on the wave wasn't really needed because, you know, it was going to come into you anyway. Um, but yeah, you can just minigun them. And, like, you can just keep autoing as well. Like, you don't need to stop autoing in some situations, especially... Um, and here, like... So this, you kind of just got flustered. We're not going to focus on it too much. But you could have just lasted that minion anyway, you know. You just changed your target for some reason. So see, like that one, you could have also got another auto on that anyway. Now, the reason why you could is because obviously the tower's autos take a lot longer to get to it than your autos. So you can actually cheese minion hits through that. Okay. Because the tower shots are slow. Like. Yeah, they're, they're ridiculously slow. Yeah. They hurt, but they're really slow. Yeah. And now this is actually a good call from Bran. It was actually a really nice play, actually. <laughs> he did really well here. 
So here as well, like, so in that situation as well, we have to just keep keep our foot down because it's like, you know, it was a, it was an okay heal. I don't think he really needed it, to be honest, but, um, but you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, obviously, over time, you'll know that a little bit more. Uh, so yeah. uh, so wh why was it bad to heal there? Like, let, let's just break it down. So why do you think it was bad to heal there? Um... So, so what's going to potentially kill Brand? Naked Caitlyn Q. Okay. I mean, I don't even think she has enough mana for Q at this she point. Had, she does it right at the end. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, okay, so she did just have enough mana. But, I mean, either way, um, all they're going to really do is auto. And, you know, it, it's you know it's a bit risky. But the, the main thing here is how you actually space when the kill is made. So right here, like the, the standing still, like the W was okay, but see, you're just standing still. So what should mm -hmm. you have done instead? Walk towards the loop. Yeah, just walk up. Like, prepare yourself for the next kill. Like, this one is 100% dead. So you've got this already. Yeah. So prepare yourself for the next one. Set up. So this one of the big things with Jinx. You always have to be thinking of what is that next move. After whatever is happening goes well, what is the next move that you are going to make? Uh, and then by analyzing that, you can decide, you know, how to really push an edge. Because right here, right, like if you were a little bit further up, you wouldn't have needed to even try and ult the Lulu. Because you would have probably killed it with autos, to be honest. So yeah, make sure the spacing is really, really important. And then see, I mean, it doesn't really matter that you have 2.2 thousand gold, because they just left themselves in a position where they couldn't do anything, you know? Mm-hmm. So here, this is another kind of an example where you, you don't need to slow push because, again, there's another dragon up and, you know, you want that. Everybody's converging in bot lane. Jax is top. Um, obviously, he does have TP, but the Shen roam was actually really, really good. So he's already moved beforehand. So you do get this kill, which is nice. Well, I mean, he gets it, but, you know, your team overall gets it. And this was good that you went and responded to the wave instantly instead of going on the dragon because you don't really need to. Uh, I, then... I've started, I've started, oh, trolling, uh, I've <laughs> yeah, started to learn that where it's like, like if, unless it's a Baron or it's a really early dragon, I don't need to be there for damage. Yeah. My job, my job is to farm and they can get dragon yeah. themselves. Like even after a one team, like a one team fight, um, I'll just go fuck up. Uh, yeah, sorry, this go... is YouTube. Uh, this is fine. YouTube. It's Family fine. friendly. It's I'm going to go, fine. I'm going to go screw off to a side lane and go farm because I'm Jinx and I'm only an item. Uh, and they can do dragon. Yeah, exactly. And this is the thing as well. Like, it's more important for you to A, get that priority in the lane, uh, and B, also sort the lane out so that when you get there again, you're not at a disadvantage when you've gained an advantage, right? Because it's a mm -hmm. lot of, like, this one of the things a lot of players do is they'll gain an advantage through a really kind of cheesy team fight where the enemies have really messed up. And then what they'll do is they'll instantly reset, instantly do whatever, and then they come back to a wave that is completely doomed. Um, and then all of a sudden they just die. And then uh -huh. it's like, oh, that lead is literally gone entirely. So this was fine. So, completely fine. That's whatever. Uh, you wanted I, so, me to yeah, go to... I do think... Yeah, yeah, sorry. So here I think that you just kind of go um, down anyway. Because you're so close to Gale Force and she's going to have it. So here, I think, like, you could have found mid, but Lux is there. So I think you honestly just walk into bot, like, find the wave that is in the tower, get a plate or two, uh, probably just one, and then just play for your overall power spike. Because this is a really, really awkward back timer, because you're not going to be able to get your Gale Force, and you're not going to want to delay it either. So it's too late to go something like a cull to, like, make up the kind of gold difference. So mm -hmm. here, you have to go into an agility cloak, which... A cloak uh, is 15%. It's it's really not going to change anything. Like, mm -hmm. on its own, anyway. Even when you get Gale Force, it's only 20%, which is, you know, every one in five autos, in theory, you get it. So, now she has Gale Force, you don't, which you do have a brand, so it isn't going to really matter too much here. But overall, if you would have just stayed, you would have been able to back on a better power spike, and you would have been able to snowball the game a little bit quicker. Okay, I'm just worried there, because I'm just worried there. That's, that's like, that... That with that wave state to me screams tempo. So if I if I sit in base with like like three two thirds health and half mana, and I farm it, um, 
Caitlyn's strong enough now that she insta shoves wave and I lose lose two plates. I mean, the thing is, like Caitlyn is meant like designed to get plates. Whoa. Caitlyn is kind of designed to get plates overall anyway, uh, but I don't think she can. Like, because, like, she's way too weak. We're, like, you've got a brand. Like, brand has ultimate. He's super strong right now. Brand can 1v2 them right here. So he has Probably, massive yeah. amounts of kill pressure. So they can't really just hard push the wave in without dying, you know? Okay. So if, if, say, for example, it was a different support, maybe. But I, I don't think it's the case when you've got a brand. Like, obviously, it does feel bad to... I've not got that pike kill and, you know, not been able to fully get that on that back. But still, it's super important that you um, you get it on the back. And the, the, the other thing you have to consider, right, as well, is when you're back here, like, okay, let's say, for example, we play this out until we get our gold threshold another few minutes, so, like, one or two mm -hmm. minutes. Like, in this position, she's not going to be able to just hard shove waves in right there because, I mean, you you still have 774 HP. Um, now, when you do reset and get that kind of gale force, and um, say for example, sure she does get two plates on there, you have a gale force and berserkers because you have such a gold lead that then you just mm -hmm. come into the lane with the brand who's very strong as well, and then say she did get them two plates, she has to stay in lane to get those two plates. She can't reset. Ah, uh, true. So that true. means you now have berserker greaves and gale force and Doran's blade. Obviously, it's not huge. Um, you'd also have your heal up as well. Um, and you just kill her. Like, so she might get two plates, but she's locking herself in the lane, which then you'll just get all four plates. <laughs> and, I mean, well, you wouldn't actually... Well, tower. Plates, plates would fall, but tower. Yeah, yeah. so you'd actually okay. still get the tower before her, which is completely fine. Now, obviously, first tower is gone, so it's not really too big of an issue, but... The thing is, you could have been farming these plates beforehand as well, which would have given you that extra bit of gold too. Somehow there was a triple kill in top lane. I have no idea. But I, yeah, that was interesting. That's platinum soul yeah, cue for you. You gotta love it. This, like, Shen, triple, Shen triple kill, by the way. Yeah, Shen triple kill. You gotta love it. Uh, so this fight... This was a very odd fight, but still completely fine. So there you could W, to be honest. So uh, Actually, your W is down, my bad. So this is fine. Obviously, Pike does <laughs> completely whiff on the brand, but and then we just get quite a few kills. And Jack shows. Yeah, which you know we just leave. It's completely fine. So yeah, here I I it, I I could feel you were itching to go for this, like uh, I could feel that you wanted to go for this. You know, it, there's no point. I mean, it was definitely doable. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Pike showed on the way back to mid, too. And the thing is, there's still kind of no point. Because, sure, Shen is here. Uh, but look, look, this brand just soaked an entire wave. So by us overchasing, we'd already got kills, we're already fine. By us overchasing, we lose an entire cannon wave. Okay. So th this, is, okay, yeah. this is guaranteed goal, this is not. So, you know, yeah. you, you, it's no worth risking, especially when you've got so much on you and you've got Gale Force and base. Uh, also, Cloak, like I said, at this point, isn't too bad because 35% is obviously one in three autos, whereas, uh, you know, just a, just one Cloak is, uh, well, Less just Gale Force, sorry, is one in five, yeah. So About Gale Force, six, yeah, so, I mean, I guess, I guess like, it, it depends because it's very flip. Like, crit is yeah. actually the worst stat in the game. But I feel yeah, like at this it's point... It's actually one of the, it's yeah, one of the yeah. two RNG things left, dragons and crit. I, I feel like they just don't know how to remove crit. <laughs> like, no. Because they tried it before with the Infinity Edge changes, but, like, the first one... Yeah. You, can't exactly, you can't exactly do something like Kraken either because then it's just too... Like, it's super calculate. Well... I don't know, but like it's super calculated that later then and then go and then it goes, Oh, one, two, crit, one, two, crit, and then they play around it somehow. Yeah, exactly. Know. So yeah, this is the thing. It's it's very odd. It's very weird stuff, but either way. Um so yeah, here we just go and just keep mid pushed out. Like mid prior was key. Like we don't really need to do too much. This was a good ult though, just to get that kill on the like Jax, everybody left it, which is kinda of funny, but so yeah, so here we just focus the tower out. We just want to get as much damage off this as possible. We don't want to go for any fights. So even this W was complete grief. Because, okay. like, is, is this W going to kill Pike? 
is he gonna just magically no. die from it? Exactly. So no. it, it's not doing anything. It's just drawing tur turret aggro, which Brandon's already got turret aggro, right? So he's just taken right. a few tower shots, meaning that this cannon has survived for quite a while. It's still got fifty percent HP. So now it's very very easy for you to just quickly finish off the tower. Um, oh well, you wouldn't finish it off, you know, but you'd get it much lower, which you know. As Jinx, you're always looking for things like towers and objectives yep. because, even, like, even on, a, say, an objective, say, for example, if you're going for a Baron or, say, for example, one of the best things I, I enjoy doing on Jinx is when the enemy is going for a Baron, what you do is you just throw, like, a W or your ultimate on the Baron and even if your team doesn't get it, you'll still get the, the passive buff from Baron. Yeah, down. the reset. Uh -huh. Yeah, so then you just clean them up entirely. So if you can get that W off, it's super, super important. This was like you. So here, you've already put your traps down. You already have your escape route. No need to flash. Uh, you could. I mean, to be fair, you could maybe just walk. But gale force is safe, so you can just mm -hmm. gale force that way, and then you're completely fine. Much lower cooldown than flash, because um, you you were never in re any real danger there. Especially because of the triple kill Shen. <laughs> like who's called Riven. You actually dragged him there because he probably clawed you. This, yeah, and then that, I tried. Yeah, you I just yeah. lost focus. Yeah. yeah, you did. You won't pilot in a bit. So here, why do you, why do you think um, why do you think anyway we're going for uh, Lord Dom second? Um, Jack's top naturally has armor. Odier's yeah. building tank. Yeah, like we just need it, and you know it's it's crit as well, which is very nice, very nice mm -hmm. for us. And I, I still think Lord Doms is one of the best items on ADC. Uh, yeah, it's probably up like, there. Giant Slayer is completely free, and you already gain 5% gold off the item. Like, just for finishing it. So you already get pretty much a kill worth of gold for finishing it. Did I did I play this this part of the game wrong? It was like, was I supposed to be fighting, or am I cool yeah. just... So just clearing jungle. This is this is fine. Like to be honest, like to be fair, you probably could have just taken the grump as well, because there's way pushing and bot anyway. But I mean, either way, it's fine. You still get a kill nude. I think it was okay that you fought. Um. So that got right down. Kill that so is. this was this was the big thing, right? So at this point of the game, what you have to be thinking is two of them are dead. How can we absolutely maximize their deaths? So right now, this tower is going to be easy to take, and then this inhib. Now, the one thing that, this was the point where my mic was actually muted, I was telling you to do, is you're so stationary, it's unreal. You're like a statue. Like, are you playing mm -hmm. Jinx or Galia? Like, <laughs> what you need to be doing in this moment is you're looking again to get as much out of your passive as possible. So instead of being back here, where you're not going to die to anyone anyway, you want to be in this area. So that as soon as this tower drops, you could just get autos and autos off on them, and yeah, okay, so Jack is a potential problem, but he you're so long range that as long as you don't get in range of his Q, there's nothing he can really do to you. So this was fine backing out, but you just have to rotate here. Like this was fine that you clear the wave, so the wave is no problem. Um, so you get the inhib, which is good, but then you should instantly be going, okay, I'm going to go to mid lane. Now, obviously, pathing did uh, get you. This is because <laughs> you you uh, you clicked so close to their base. So your first click was here. So because mm -hmm. this was your first click, as soon as you then clicked over there, your champ was still here. So it runs like this. So it's just to do with how pathing works overall. As you'll see it now, see, the click was there, and then you clicked on the map. And the fastest way was yeah. The race. This was actually a really big mistake. Yeah. Because you didn't get the the tower as quick. So right here, what what do you think you should have looked at it? Because this uh, tower you is top. Yeah. So you can stack it in this inhibitor. Okay, great. And now, like, there's no way they don't get it, right? So they're gonna. Uh, I mean, there's no way they don't. That is. Brand's no one way. HP, and you don't have any other DPS. Nah, you just have there's a Lux no way that. No, but look, no, no, no. Because when your AP becomes fifty percent of your AD, I think it's fifty percent uh, of your over fifty percent. Sorry, um, you end up doing uh, magic damage on your auto attacks. Yeah, so I know that, but you yeah. have a you have a, a two item. 
Lux with very low attack speed, a Shen is... autoing the cannon and zoning. Yeah, but it, it's completely fine. It's completely fine. Okay. Because if you move, then they will get this. This is 100% gone. Like, there's no way. Like, look how far back they are. It's, it's 100% going to drop. Um, and then mm -hmm. you also get your movement speed buff when you're, say, in this area here, which allows you to get into top. So you can get this wave, save yours. This tower is very low. You then use your get excited to get this tower and potentially that inhib as well. Mm -hmm. I think you could have potentially triple inhibed there. Or at least got the tower, which would have then meant you could just walk back top and take the inhib, right? Yeah. So here, the W, it's very, very hard because this uh, this area, I think, opens up more for, with Ocean. For, for some reason, I'm terrible at skill shots. I don't like... I don't like intentionally throw skill shots. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, the Lulu the Lulu with my traps, the, some, some of my Ws are... Uh, like, you'll see yeah. in some of my replays, I'm just like that one. My W is like, I'm throwing it at somebody, and oh, it just went through a wall. Like, it wasn't even lane. It had no shot to hit him. Yeah. Like, I'm not intentional with my skill shots. Granted, I'm an AD carry, but that's yeah. still no excuse. Yeah, and this is the thing, like I was saying, like, uh, just start learning faces and stuff like that, you know? It'll mm. help a lot more. Um, so then, here at this point, you know, this is just, the game's just closing out. There's nothing really to it. Again, at this point, you don't really need to back and spend that gold. Like, you're so far ahead, and you've got double super waves crashing in, and you have Baron. So if you back here, you are the biggest griefer known to man. <laughs> like, because the the pressure that you get from this Baron and the items that you already have, you're already two items, and this Caitlyn is so far behind, it doesn't matter. So the amount of pressure that you get from staying here, you don't need to back and spend that gold until you need to. Like, say, for example, if you're pushing this top lane and then everybody ran in and died, okay, you back, you spend it because you need to because you can't do anything else. But mm -hmm. using the priority, and it's also a, a big rule with Baron that you always want to follow, is if your team are backing, or if anybody on your team decides they want to back, just just back. Because yeah. there's no point five. in a Baron push if it's not five. And yeah. if your team stay on the map, unless you are desperate, like desperate to back, like no HP, no mana, then just stay on the map. It's like a big concept with pro play, but it obviously applies to solo queue in some facet as well. Um, yep. So yeah, so I will end that recording there.